Hello and welcome to this Juniview webinar on basic data management for Juniview users. While this will be a very basic rundown of the data management process, which can be familiar to regular users of Juniview, it is intended as a refresher on the process for all users. Everything we will cover in this webinar can be found on the Juniview Help Forum, which you will find at help.juniview.com. So in this webinar, we'll look at what to consider in preparation of adding new data, creating a data table in Juniviewer, uploading data to Juniviewer, view and export data, deleting data, and then of course, the Q&A. What to consider in preparation of adding new data. If data being added is not existing data in your Juniviewer account, a new table will need to be created. As part of this process, you will need to consider what columns your table will have. You also need to consider what type of data, text, numerical values, dates, and so forth, you will want in your table. Of course, what is your intended use of this data? Will it be part of a report, or is it a condition parameter, in which case you will need to add a data parameter? More information on this in the help files, as well as the previous webinars available on our Lombrix YouTube channel. The table will then also have to be linked to ensure the query engine in Juniviewer knows how to handle the data. So, once you have created the new table, it is available as a data import template. If you are importing data that has different column headings, you will want to tell Juniviewer which column in the newly created template maps to the data you are uploading. If the headings are the same, you will not need to use the mapping template. When preparing the data file, you should take care to ensure that the data types in the data file you have specified for the new table match it. You can then use the upload download data page to upload your table definitions template and your data file to Juniviewer. I'll take you through a quick demonstration on how this is done, and you can follow on along to the different pages if you are logged into Juniviewer. Like with any cook cooking show, we have data ready to go, which is something you may not have available right now. So we'll start by looking at the data we want to add. I want to add cracking data, and we do not have cracking data um, in our database as yet. So that will mean we need to add a new table. If the table already exists, you will need to skip this step. So I've already opened the file on my computer. And here you can see we have the required columns for Juniview, which you'll hear more about later on. Network ID, section ID, block from, block to. But we have a total of 10 columns. To, to start the process of adding the table, I will go to Manage, Add Table. I'll then download the table definitions template and open it once it's ready. Hovering over the column headings, once you say enable editing, hovering over the column headings would give you a little rundown of what each um, column means and what's supposed to be captured there, but we will do the same right now. The column names will be the columns in your new table, with the minimum requirement being network ID, section ID, and location ID. As a location ID, if it's point data, you only need a lock to or lock from. If it's uh, linear data, you will need lock to and lock from. In the label column, um, this what you captured there is what would appear in the drop down lists in Junovio. And in our case, we're just going to use the existing column names. The data types have to be appropriate for the type of data you have. Make sure that the data matches, data type matches the respective column from your data file. For text column, good practice is to select the minimum length required. Unknown length should only be selected when very long values will be stored, like notes or comments. The allow null values column will determine if the column can contain empty values. And if you select false, all the data that is added for this column has to have values. And this should be the case for network ID, section ID, and location columns. If you think there's a chance that there may be not always be data for a specific column, set the value to true. Once you've double-checked all your information, 
save the table definitions template in the folder. So let's look at our data. I've already highlighted the columns that I want to um, have in my database. So I simply transpose them, paste them in my column name. Since I'm going to use exactly the same names for my label, I'm just pasting that there. And now I need to select the data type. Network ID is, has to be an integer type, so number value, no decimals, as does section ID, lock from, and lock to. Lane, um, depending on your naming convention, would be a text, and here's the unknown that I mentioned earlier. In this case, we've taken the shortest one, text, 30 characters maximum. Mess date, of course, would be your date, and then the cracking information in this case would be a decimal, and I'm going to make that the same for the rest of my column. I want to always have a network ID in my data, so that would be false as do I with a section ID and a location from. So then you go ahead and you save your data, which I have already done. You save your table definitions template in a folder where you can reach it normally together with your um, tracking or your normal data. So we will now go ahead and go to upload our table definitions template. For this, we go to Manage, Upload, Download Data, Select Files, and there's my table definitions template. I just called it Cracking the TV for table definitions. Select Upload, and the file is uploaded to Juno Viewer. We then go back to our Add Table menu, and here we select the file that we just uploaded. Here we find it, Cracking TV. The sheet we're going to use is table definitions. You can upload more than one um, file or uh, data section in a Excel spreadsheet. And here you just say which sheet the relevant information is that you're looking for. We're going to give it a table name. So it's important for the name to be a single word without special characters, so no spaces. If you want a space, use an underscore in the place of a space. The prefix TBL is used by Junior Viewer System Table, so this cannot be used. So in this case, let's just call it cracking. I'm going to use my underscore webinar. You can use the label cracking webinar, and here I can use a space. The note or a comment is a an optional space, which I'm not going to use at this moment. So we're going to check our columns. Once it's satisfied that there is not an existing table like this, it would open the following screen that allows you to link this new table metadata for use by the Junovio query engine. Essentially, telling Junovio which column contains the data required by the queries, which at a minimum, as you already mentioned, is network ID, section ID and location info. Just a reminder, if you have linear data, the lock from is as important as the lock to. For point data, lock from is sufficient. Once done, select add table to database. So in our case, it wants to know where the network ID column is and easily enough, it's the network ID, section ID, once again, section ID. We don't have a section name column, so we're not gonna add anything there. The lane code item uh, column is under lane, and the measurement date is mess date. We have a location start, which is lock from, and we have a location end, which is lock to. The rest of the information is optional, and then I go ahead and add the table to the database. Confirms that the table has been successfully added to the database. The next step would be to prepare the data for the upload. So manage, upload, download data. Select the file that I want to upload. In this case, it's my tracking data. I should perhaps just go a step back. Let's just go to manage, templates. You will recall that I mentioned that 
The template for the tracking should now be available in the drop down since you have added the um, new table. So if we go to, um, we want a data import template for the tracking, you can see we have our tracking webinar template. Now, if I download the template, similar to what the table definitions look like, you would have your Excel sheet in what you, that you can use now to start populating the data once you um, have it available. You can see the columns is exactly the same as the cracking data that I had earlier. So we then proceed to the add data page, which is under manage, uh, sorry, upload, download data is the first process. We need to add our file to the, um, to Juniviewer. So there's our cracking data. I've saved it in my folder. Once I upload it, it is now available for adding. So the next process would be to go to manage, add data. And we want to add information to our cracking webinar table. You will select the table that you want to add data from and confirm if you want to add or replace the data. Beware of replacing data as this will delete all the existing data in that table for the selected network and replace it with the data that you are uploading. So you better be sure of the process that you are following. In our case, we know that there's no data, so I'm just going to continue and with append to the existing data. We then need to select the source, which in this case was the file that we last uploaded, cracking data, and its cracking webinar is the sheet that we want to look at. Um, if you are using a mapping template and have uploaded that, following the same process that we did earlier to upload files, you will select that now in the column mapping template uh, drop down. We are not using one, so that's not what we're going to do. This is the format of our date, and the quick delete tag is optional, and it's used to um, identify, easily identify specific data. So I'm just going to make a cracking webinar March. And we go ahead and we add the data. The system will now check that your data matches with the data types in the columns as well as the required formats. And as you can see, we have a problem with the mess data for, um, column. It's not in the format that Junoviewer you know, wants and that we said earlier that we're going to submit the data as. That means we open our file again, we open our cracking data file and we simply update the format so we know that it wants it in the format of day day to do that it's in the correct format now and we can save the data right. so now i don't need to go to manage upload download data again because that means i'm going to have to come back to this screen and capture all of this information again I can simply go to my user icon, upload a file, select that file again. And once it confirms that it's been uploaded, I can just say add data. You can see that I've successfully added 721 new records. You may need to export the data from time to time, and you have the ability to do so in Junoviewer. We won't cover the SQL capability that is available in Junoviewer at this stage, but it will be a subject on its own to be covered in, in a future webinar. To export data from a table, go to the Manage Export Data page. So we'll just demo that quickly. So go, we go to Manage Data Export. We want to look, we want to select the portion of the network that we want to look at. In this case, I want to look at all the sections, all the subsections of the training network. I then select the table that I want to export the data from. I want to export the data that I've just uploaded or look at that. And since it is time series data, I have the option of exporting a date range or all the data. And in this case, I'm going to select all the data. That's an exported and in Excel, and I can then open it and review the data. So it may happen that data has to be deleted. Junoviewer allows you to delete specific data without impacting data already in the system. 
So if we want to delete data, we will go to manage again, delete data. And on this page, you can select the table that you want to delete data from and select any one or a combination of the four selections, user, data, quick, uh, and the quick delete tag. Um, tag to um, so delete specific data. And this is where the quick delete tag mentioned earlier becomes useful. So let's go ahead again and look at our cracking webinar table. Since I'm the only one that added data in this case, I will be the only added by user as is all specific date um, data was added. I'm gonna use my quick delete tag. So crack, cracking webinar March. I wanna make sure what the um, data is that I'm gonna delete. And this matches exactly with the information that I uploaded earlier. And then I can just simply go a and delete the data. And all my records are now gone. As mentioned earlier, the SQL functionality will be the subject of future webinar. That concludes this webinar. Thank you for your time. If there are any questions, we will deal with those now. Please send us any feedback or suggestions you may have. I have to find the length of the webinar and what other topics that you might want us to cover. We always welcome any information or support. Thank you.